I can uh, utter Muslims five times a day. And one day, when I was uh, bowing my head on the ground, uh, putting my head on the ground and bowing my knees, saying, Subhana Rabbi Allah wa bahamdeh. This is the verse that we say in Arabic, when our head is on the ground. And I, uh, I, a revelation came to my mind, and the, the question was, so why God is asking me to talk to Him in a language that I don't know? Okay, so if you are God, you, you must know that I am Persian, I am, yeah, love, love, that's love, yeah, that's, that's something to love really about. And uh, yeah, I asked him and I said, if you're God, you must know that I'm not Arab. Why you expect me to talk to you in another, another language? And also, and uh, you want me to repeat things <laughs> every day, the same things, you know? That revelation came to my mind and I said, oh, so that's silly. I'm not gonna pray anymore. But I said something to God. I said, God, if you are Alive, show yourself to me. Yeah, uh, I'm coming from Iran. Iran, uh, as you know, Iran is an uh, Islamic country at the moment, and I grew up in a Muslim family in southwest of Iran. Uh, and uh, so, like every other Muslims, praying just uh, five times a day and knowing that God's name is Allah. And uh, it came to the point that I was uh, almost 17 years old and uh, uh, my journey with Jesus start started from there. As a Muslim, uh, you must pray in Arabic because Allah is Arab. That's what, uh, you know, he, un he understand Arabic. Even we've been told when we get to heaven, uh, even if you are Persian, we speak in Persian or Farsi, we, we're going to have a six-month course and we learn in <laughs> Arabic and then talk to him. So I'm sorry, but we've been believing in what, what they've been hearing because of the spirit of fear. So behind the spirit of Islam is the spirit of fear. Uh, so I was praying like other Muslims five times a day and one day when I was uh, bowing my head on the ground, uh, putting my head on the ground and bowing my knees, saying Subhana Rabbi Allah wa bahamdeh. This is the verse that we say in Arabic, when our head is on the ground. And I, uh, I, a revelation came to my mind and the, the question was, so why God is asking me to talk to him in a language that I don't know? Okay, so if you are God, you, you must know that I am Persian, I am, yeah, love, love, that's love, yeah, that's, that's something to love really about, and uh, yeah, I asked him, and I said, if you're God, you must know that I'm not Arab, why you expect me to talk to you in another, another language, and also, and uh, you want me to repeat things, every day, the same things, you know, I get bored if you talk, tell me the same things. But anyways, that revelation came to my mind and I said, oh, so that's silly. I'm not gonna pray anymore. But I said something to God. I said, God, if you are alive, show yourself to me. Seven days after that, not praying to Allah anymore and waiting for God, alive God, to show himself to me, I had a dream from Jesus Christ. But not only me, my mother, my sister, and myself in the same night. We did have the same dream of Jesus Christ. <laughs> so Jesus, with two white papers, he came to our dream. And he said to my mom, Mary, her, her, her name is in Persian is Maryam, which is Mary in English, and said, I am Jesus Christ. Take two, two, these two white papers and pass them to Amin and Elham. Elham is my sister and we were behind my mom. My mom got them and passed them to us. When she turned back to Jesus, I woke up. And that time was five o'clock in the morning. So I'm, I'm an engineer and numbers are important to me. I still remember and I tell you why. 
So I said, what's wrong, you know, who is Jesus? You know, as a Muslim, you, you think that Jesus is only a prophet. A uh, good prophet, prophet of love, actually that's what they tell us. And I said, what was those two white papers? And in the meantime, I was pr thinking about that. I heard my mom and my sister were crying in the other bedroom. I ran away to them and I said, what's wrong with you? Why you are you crying this time of the day? And they said, we did have a dream from Jesus. <laughs> And I said, S are you serious? And they said, yes. And I said, I had, I had a dream about Jesus too. Please share it with me. So when they shared with me, I bowed my knees. I joined them crying. <laughs> I don't know for how long, but I cr we cried. And we said, God, what do you want to show us? Because we did have no information about Christianity. The Bible is not a free book to buy in the bookstores in Iran. So you can't find Bible. But the story didn't finish here. God didn't leave us to this point. Five hours after that, 10 o'clock in the morning, one of our friends knocked the door and he came inside and he put a Farsi Persian Bible on the table. <laughs> and he said, I am sent by God to share this word with you. I want to tell you, Jesus is not only a prophet. Jesus Christ is the word of God. Whom became flesh. He came. He left heaven. He died on the cross for you and I. For those who come to believe in him will be forgiven. And my mom stopped him and I said, he said, why you didn't share this before with us? Because we knew him for five years. <laughs> you see? And, uh, and he said, I had to come today. And my mom said, we did have the same dream of Jesus Christ last night. And he said, what do you mean by we? He said, me, my daughter, and my son. I mean, we didn't have the same dream of Jesus. And you're telling us about Jesus. What, what's going on? And he said, are you serious? What was that dream? And then my mom shared the dream. He bowed his knees and he cried for half an hour. He was weeping. We said, what's wrong with you? <laughs> and then he said, you know what? You said five o'clock in the morning you woke up mm -hmm. of that dream. Five a.m. I heard Jesus' voice in my room. And he said, son, get up. Take my word to Amin's house. They are ready to hear my word today. <laughs> so the God that you and I, we are serving is a live God. Yeah. Even in the countries, clap for him. Yeah. Worship him. Worship him. With clapping. Yes, he deserves that. So the God that we worship is coming to people's life, even in the countries that Christianity is forbidden. Those white papers, my sister and I, in in natural, we received those two white papers. I, long story short, I became a petroleum engineer in Iran. I started to work in National Iranian Drilling Company. And um, also other companies like China National Logging Corporation. And uh, when, I, when I was working uh, on the oil rigs, oil and gas rigs, uh, two weeks on and two weeks off, so I had my my New Testament Bible with me, covered with the newspaper, you know, uh, I mean, yeah, I had to, so for people to don't, you know, see the cover, but anyways, uh, so one day I didn't pay attention and something happened, um, and I was in rush, I had to get out of my unit, and my colleague was there, so my Bible was, he opened my Bible, and he understood that's, that's a, the gospel of Jesus Christ. So he took a photo, he sent, he sent an email to my manager and then through this they understood that I am uh, not Muslim anymore and I'm Christian. And my, my boss called me the day after and he said we uh, need to see you when you come back to the town. And I said okay, but I, I knew in my spirit that something is going on. And then uh, the next, uh, when I got back, I just went to my uh, manager and he said, uh, uh, 
we uh, got this email and we've heard that you are not Muslim anymore. And I wanted to be wise and I said, what's wrong with my faith and, uh, you know, am I doing a good job or, or he said that we are happy because you speak English, you are an interpreter and also a trolling engineer on the rig. But uh, this is a policy for the oil ministry. For those who are, who are uh, you know, employed by the oil ministry, you must be uh, Muslim because that's a national Iranian drilling company. And that point, I, I said, okay, if you want to know, yes, I am not Muslim anymore and I'm Christian. And he said, look, because you are a good man, I, I don't want to uh, make you, a, uh, put you in a big trouble. I give you this paper, write down in this, on this white paper that you've got a private problem and you can't work two weeks on and two weeks off because of your wife or your family. And I said, I don't have any problem. I just got married and I don't, I, I don't have any problem. But he said, if you don't do that, I have to pass you, know, pass you to the religious uh, you know, segment, uh, kind of a religious police, I don't know what we call it in it, we call it uh, Basij. Basij is a group of uh, religious uh, people that they work in every national company back in Iran. So, uh, so I got that paper, wrote down that I've got a private problem and I can't work anymore here and signed it and I left it. So that was my, my white paper that I received and I got sacked and my sister also got her hers from the Ministry of Education because she was a st um, uh, English teacher. So we started uh, underground church. Um, we did have a couple of uh, Christian channels uh, on satellite uh, from America. Iranian uh, pastors uh, used to you know have and still have uh, pro programs, and they uh, they used to give us uh, teaching. Mm. And uh, my mom called them, and uh, my mom is a brave woman. She she doesn't care about anything. <laughs> she, she loves Jesus uh, a lot. And uh, she called them, and uh, with my dad's mobile actually, <laughs> which after that phone call we received a really strict text uh, from the center. And they said, we know that you contacted to, to the Christian channel in America. If you do that again, you will be followed by, you know, um, I don't know the English word for it, but religious police and serious reaction, something like that. And uh, so long story short, my mom had that uh, uh, phone call. So the pastor said, Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 said, that the heavy burden people, you know, come to me, you know, my yoke is light, you know. And, and right after that verse, uh, he said, if you are in Iran and you're watching this program and you had a dream from Jesus Christ, you are chosen, contact with us. My mom got the mobile, just contacted, <laughs> contacted them and said that, uh, pastor, we had a dream from Jesus. And here we go, you know, what should we do? We need a pastor. My, my mother said, she said, we need Bibles. So said, stay on the line. Uh, don't talk. Don't, don't say anything else. Wait. So they took our information, our address, our, how many we, um, are we and how we came to Christ. And, and then we started to have, uh, once a month, they sent us a pastor from the capital of Iran, which is Tehran, to Ahvaz. Uh, my city called it Ahvaz. And then once a month we had that, which 1,000 kilometers are far from each other. Mm -hmm. So they came and we started to have our, our under, underground, you know, church or house church, whatever we call it. And uh, yeah, so they brought Bible for us. And, uh, uh, and uh, if um, my pastors, uh, you know, they were teaching us, not, not a normal teaching like Sunday, you know, we go to church on Sunday, you know. We hear half an hour message, or you know, uh, we just uh, say, please say hello to each other, something like that. You know? and, and still, we don't do it sometimes, uh, you know. But in that two hours, I can tell you, they were teaching us the whole Bible because they said we may be arrested and killed tonight. So, we want you to be fed. So, this is serious. And we were not just, you know, listening. 
we were taking, oh, actually, we were, I was taking notes and he got them and he tear them up. And I said, what's wrong with you? And he said, you're not allowed to t take any notes. Yeah. yeah? <laughs> so you have lots of notes, but you have to keep it here. Okay? Yeah. Actually, after three years, when they trusted us and uh, we became like a, you know, part of their you know, ministry and you know, we started uh, sharing the gospel with a, a way that called CPM, which we uh, understood that um, our pastors used to be, and they, they still are, uh, supported by open doors, which we, we are here, you know, we hear the open doors, and I want to really uh, encourage these people that if open doors was not there, my pastor could not get fed and supported, I, I could have not be here and I could, you know, lo lose my faith or uh, you can imagine that. So they used to go to Turkey, Malaysia, uh, Georgia or whatever and have conference for a week, feed, you know, they used to get fed, spiritually fed and sent back to Iran. And through that connection with open doors, and the Bibles that we used to have was supported by open doors, you know, smuggled to, the, to our country. And uh, we knew the name of open doors, but, but I never knew that I'm gonna come here and sit here to <laughs> open doors with me. Um, but the, the thing is, after three years, when they, 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 they trusted us, so I, my ministry became, you know, they become their taxi. I became my pastor's taxi. So I used to take him. And I was really privileged that I was able to take the man of, and woman of God, you know, around and uh, take them. Uh, but here, you know, when we come, people come to here, after one year, they, they, they come to church, they want to become worship leader. <laughs> What's wrong with you? <laughs> just, just kidding. So, I need a taxi. I need a taxi. After three years. Long story short, so I used to take him to different, different, uh, uh, you know, lanes or, uh, you know, um, in, in our suburb, I, I tell you the number, I, they, 40 houses in that year that we had dream, had dreams of Jesus Christ and came to Christ in my suburb. And though that, those pastors used to go and visit, you know, some of them. And in the meantime, some of others came to, to Christ. And I used to go, and I was not allowed to watch which house they are entering, but sometimes, you know, I was doing that. And I knew that house, their son is my classmate. But we never knew that we are in the same faith. Just something. Two weeks before I lost my job, I prayed to God. So I want to tell you to, to make sure what you pray. I prayed, I said, God, I can't go to Bible college. I want to worship you freely. I want to do uh, you know, your work. I want to become a pastor. Two weeks after that, I lost my job. Mm -hmm. Three weeks after that, losing my job, I was in Christmas Island. I came to Australia by boat. Okay, I had to flee from Iran wow. with my wife. Three months after that, I was in Brisbane. Three months after that, I started Bible college. Yeah. <laughs> and six months after the Bible college, or nine months after Bible college, we started the Persian church. Wow. That's awesome. and, and today I'm, I'm a pastor of Persian church in Brisbane, and also we started the Melbourne, and we're going to start a church in, in, in Sydney. So, and I lost my oil and gas. I'm, I was a petroleum engineer. I was working for National Iranian Training Command. I was cranky to God. I said, God, I didn't ask you, I want to lose my job. I said, I want to know you more, you know, and do more. But I tell you what, that's exactly like Abraham. God asked his Isaac, but he provided the lamb. Okay? So I lost my job, but I tell you what, I hear. I'm a petroleum engineer. I work on the oil and gas rigs in Australia and for number one oil and gas company in the whole world uh -huh. called Shell Leger. 
Okay. They, they, I applied for them, and we don't have enough time, but just tell you one. Oil and gas company, you must be Australian citizenship. I don't have Australian citizenship yet. I have five years visa, temporary protection visa. And uh, they uh, interviewed me on the phone. My colleagues had interviewed for three days in Perth. They interviewed me on the phone, <laughs> wanted to ask me three questions. They asked me one and they said, we are happy, we're gonna hire you. Wow. And I said, I don't have a passport. And they said, oh, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna think. And after one week, they came back and they said, we changed the policy of the company to be able to hire you. So this is the God that we serve. If God is asking, if God is taking something of you, he has the better one in the store, okay? So our God never ever owe his children, okay? Just beautiful, amazing. Um, I'm going to pray for you, I'm going to pray for you.